Alex graduated from her residential special needs college six months ago and at the graduation service there were a number of awards given out for different types of achievement and we were incredibly proud that Alex won the award from her college for overcoming her disability and that was a huge sense of achievement and it, it really brought tears to her dad's and my and her carer's eyes. And um, you know, she, she works so hard and is so eager to, to do her best. Um, her best obviously doesn't include GCSEs or academic achievement, but um, I, I think that sense of um, doing her best is something that you know, we will be proud of forever. And the other thing is, um, Alex, as one of four siblings, is easily our child who's the most thoughtful, who's the most generous, who's the most organized. Um, she will be the only child who gives me an early Mother's Day card, who gives me an early birthday card, who gives me an early anniversary card. And um, that sense of Prada really being ordered and organized um, definitely has a lot to going for it. One member of staff would go and support her in this small Baptist church in Kettering. And um, there, she was immediately at home. It was very similar to our church at home. And after probably a year of doing that, they then were able to leave her in the church. And that she is totally independent when she goes to church. And that actually would never have happened with us because she would have come with us. So, and, and she reads, uh, contributes to the service there, and that is a real growth place for Well, it's self-esteem, you know, it, it, it underpins that. We were very, very proud of Lydia. When her sister was married, uh, Lydia was 17 years old, and she was going to be chief bridesmaid. There were three bridesmaids. She was the youngest, but she was the chief bridesmaid, and she was going to read the Bible reading in church and uh, we thought we'd better make sure that somebody goes with her in case she drops the Bible, loses her place and so on. So the friend Sue, who was also bridesmaid, went up and um, she stood with Lydia and she was holding the Bible and Lydia said, I can do it, took it, <laughs> which was a little ripple of amusement around the congregation and she read The Wedding at Cana perfectly with real expression and I tell you, people were groping for their hankies. They were all so proud of her. It was absolutely wonderful. So that was a real high spot. So many proud moments. I think losing the weight has just been, she'd lost like two stone over the years, put two stone back, lost three stone, put three stone back. But to see her change as a person and be active again. Um, you know, we have three dogs and she couldn't walk the dogs with me. She couldn't do anything. And now she can have a normal life when she comes home for the weekends. It's just, it's wonderful. There are so many proud moments, there really are. But I think this has been one of, it's been up there because the stakes were so high and we knew that if this didn't work, um, you know, then our, our options were small. But it's, it's been an extraordinary journey. 
I think the, the greatest thing that we really remember about Nick and his success, yes, um, was the Duke of Edinburgh Award that he did. Um, he'd taken the Bronze Award um, and was determined to take the silver as the next step. Um, this came through his college, they promoted it. Um, he went in for the training, um, I mean he got very poor muscle tone, he got very small feet, um, but he was determined he was going to do it. Um, so the first year he did the practice ex ex expedition and then went in for the main one, I believe it was in this, this happened, and he dislocated his oh, knee. Me. So he dislocated his knee and staggered back to the, it was the second day of the expedition. Um, the third morning um, he woke up and the knee was badly swollen. Mm. They took him to Stoke Mandeville Hospital, sent him home on crutches and end of his expectations for the, the first part. Um, well, for that um, award. Um, but being Nicholas, never mind, I'll do it next year. He went, everything went fine, and he finally got the Duke of Edinburgh Award. And I really think that was a great achievement. He was determined and um, he persevered and, and positive, he was going to do it. So I think really we were actually very, very proud. Yes, that the Duke of Edinburgh was marvellous, that he, he persevered. And, and got that. The wonderful silver lining of the PWS journey that I could not have anticipated is meeting the amazing families, the incredible caring staff, the fabulous people from the charity who've dedicated so much of their energy to supporting this community, as well as a remarkable team of um, medical and health and care professionals. And in our normal workaday bubble, we wouldn't have had a chance to meet um, that incredible cross-section of people if it hadn't been for um, us starting this PWS journey. She's been a great joy to us and uh, we all adore her and want the best for her and it is therefore a sadness to us when things are closed off to her. But she is our lovely daughter. I've got other children. I've got two younger children who are 25 and 22 and in fact my, my daughter is just doing her finals at speech therapy, my younger daughter, because she was so inspired by Katie's journey that she's decided to become a speech therapist. Um, so we have a very big extended family, which has been wonderful because especially when times were really, really bad last year, everyone pulled together and did shifts at the hospital and, you know, looked after and everybody, even the small grandchildren know what Katie's allowed and what she isn't allowed. So, you know, it's, it's made life much easier. You know, I think parents with PW, children with PW, you devote your life to them because you have to. Um, and so to be able to pass that mantle on and say to somebody else, I feel comfortable with you doing my job, uh, is very special. I think also, I mean, now that he's, uh, the thing that uh, is, uh, sticks in my mind is, you know, you can look at him now and I can look back over all those years and look at him. He's grown up, he's a man now. He can look at me in the eye as a man, which is, which is marvellous. I remember chasing him back behind the ambulance when they took him down to uh, Great Ormond Street from the, from the original hospital and followed the ambulance down. And, you know, you didn't know then. You shut your mind out to the future. You didn't know what was going to happen. All you knew was he's going to probably the best place in the world to be looked after. And then to see him, sorry, now or, or the last few months as he is now, that's marvellous, that's wonderful.